All right, we're moving on in this lesson to learn about the third of our five types of reactions, which is we're gonna be learning about single displacement today, or single replacement, it means more or less the same thing. Now you can imagine it's gonna be a lot like double displacement, there's gonna be some swapping of something, because that's what displacement means. Um, but before we get to single displacement, let's do a little review of what we've learned up till now. So I've got these general diagrams, and actually I'm wishing right now that I had labeled them in some way, but let's say that this is A, B, C, and D. So what I want you to choose is which of these reactions down here in kind of its general representation would be a best representation of synthesis. All right, synthesis means two things coming together. Now I do see up here I've got two things, um, but they aren't coming together, so that's not it. This is only one thing in the start. That's two things, maybe, but I gotta tell you, I think D looks like synthesis. Definitely two things coming together, um, so that's a good representation of it. If I said A, B, C, D for this one, if I said which of these would be the best representation of decomposition, which one would you choose? Well, decomposition is one thing falling apart. So here we go. We've got one thing falling apart into two separate things. Definitely B is going to be decomposition. Now, obviously, one of these on here is single displacement. It's the one we're going to learn today. But if we've already identified a fair number of these, what I want to know is which one best represents double displacement. If you said A, you are correct, right? Essentially, you know that the, the yellow one will get rid of the green one and it will pick up the blue one and you get that. And so they're sort of, they're doubly swapping, right? Which means that this is the form of our single displacement reaction. So look at the differences between single and double displacement. You know, one of the ways that I like to think about it is I like to think about it, and, and I'm not making any sort of like value judgment here, but I find single displacement sadder than the other reactions. And the reason is because, like, look at double displacement, right? Here's double displacement. If this is a couple that comes to the dance, and that's a couple that comes to the dance, it may be morally questionable that they've swapped dates, but, you know, everybody goes home happy. Everybody goes home with a date, right? But look at the single displacement. This is, this is a couple that comes to the dance. This is somebody who comes by themselves, stag, right? And look what happens. This one steals the date of the other one, and this one goes home sad, goes home all alone. So definitely in this reaction, we're going to have some element all alone at the end, and we're going to have some compound that we're going to have to work with to kind of figure out... Um, what's going on there. So it's a little bit of a sadder one than the other ones. But while we're here, let's think about the products that we're going to be predicting for this one and anticipate some things. Is it, is it a compound, let's say, number one or number two that you're going to have to check for diatomic elements? Definitely number two, because this is going to be an element by itself. I don't know, maybe it'll be oxygen, maybe it'll be chlorine, but it's going to be some element by itself that might be diatomic, so we're going to have to check that. And of course for this one, because it's a compound, we're going to have to check charges. So the great thing about finishing our, our uh, sequence of reactions, and I know you might be thinking, wait a minute, this is only four reactions, we're not really done, but here we're going to get to check charges and check for diatomics. Okay, so we're going to do this reaction right here. And there's something that you need to pay attention to when you decide to swap them. Because remember that sodium is the one that comes in sort of by itself to the dance, right? This is the couple. That's the compound. They came to the dance together, and sodium's going to steal one of their dates. But the deal is this. A positive ion must bond with a negative ion. Now, when we had the two compounds, it was pretty easy, especially when I color-coded them, to know whether they were positive or negative. But the first thing I always do with these is I try to decide, is sodium a positive or negative ion? Because that'll decide whether it gets together with magnesium or nitrogen. And you see sodium's right here. Sodium's charge is plus one. You might even want to write it up there just temporarily to remind yourself that it's plus one. But the important thing is all metals are positive. This entire orange area is positive, and all non-metals are negative. Uh, so that means, is sodium going to get together with magnesium or nitrogen? Well, if you said nitrogen, you're right, because magnesium is right here, and its charge is plus two, and nitrogen's over here, its charge is minus three, you can see that sodium's going to get together with, with nitrogen. Now, before I put them in there, I want to know, 
I know sodium is going to get together with nitrogen. I know not to bring the subscripts, right? It says do not bring the subscripts. We know that. We're going to figure them out later. But the question is, should the sodium go first or should the nitrogen go first? Which way do you think is better and why? Definitely we want the sodium to go first because sodium is plus one charge. This is minus three. You remember cations always go on the left of the formula? Now we're going to come back and check charges in just a second, but if sodium comes in here and gets together with nitrogen, that means magnesium ends up on its own. And did you see how I did not bring the three over here? Because we do not bring the subscripts, we figure things out afterwards. Now, is it NaN or Mg that I need to check for diatomic elements? It's Mg because it's an element by itself. Now we know the diatomic elements are the Brinkelhoff elements, right? And I don't see magnesium in there, so we're not going to put a 2 on it, so that's good. But this one being a compound, the sodium nitride, we, we're going to need to check charges. Do we need more sodiums or nitrides? Definitely sodium. So I'm going to put a 3 down here to get myself 3 sodiums. And then, of course, as always when we're done, we come back and erase all of the charges. And if we're in the mood here, you know that we should typically at the end balance the equation. Hey, I say let's do it on this one just because we want to keep those balancing skills going. All right, so what I want you to do is I want you to write down the whole reaction, balance it on your paper, and then type in the coefficients. All right, I'll show you mine. Let's see. I see two nitrogens there, so I'm probably going to put a two there to get two nitrogens. I have six sodiums, so I'm going to put six sodiums, and I have three magnesium, so I'm going to put a three there, and there we go. We could put a one if it's a computer. We definitely want to put a one, but we don't have to. All right, so that's the idea. It's like a single person coming to the dance and stealing their partner. All right, who's the single person here? Is it the K3P or the O2? It's the O2, right? Now we have to decide uh, how oxygen's going to behave. Is it going to get together with K or is it going to get together with P? And for that, that means we got to put a charge on it. What charge is oxygen? It's negative 2. Do you see it right there? It's negative 2. Well, you can't really see it on my periodic table. Now, Potassium is plus 1 because I see it right there, and phosphorus is minus 3 because I see it right there. So do you believe that the oxygen is going to get together with the K or the P? Definitely the K. And what goes first in the formula? Should we do KO or OK? <laughs> OK, that's funny. Which one of these two is correct? KO, because... Potassium is plus one charge, oxygen is minus two. We know that the positive ion has to go first. Now, and what element ends up by itself over here? Phosphorus. Now, is it the KO or the phosphorus we need to check for diatomic elements? Phosphorus. Is phosphorus a Brinkelhoff element? No, it is not. So there's not going to be any two down there. Um, let's see. And over here, we've got to check charges. Do I need more Ks or Os? What's the final formula? K2O. That's absolutely right. And then we erase our charges at the end. And uh, let's balance this equation. Let's do this one too. So really quickly, I want you to write the equation on your paper and balance it. And type in the coefficients. Okay, let's see. I've got two O's, so I might want to do a two there. But the problem is that gives me four K's. So let's see. Oh dear, that's not going to work. Let me try putting a two there. That'll give me six of those. And I'm going to get my eraser. This is a tough one. Um, I've got six K's, so if I do three K's, does that work? Oh, no, that doesn't work. This is a hard one. By the way, when you're balancing, make sure that you're always doing it in pencil, right? Because it might be that you have to, to make some corrections over and over again. So if I, had, if I tried to put uh, a three here, that would give me a, a very funny number of oxygens. Let me try putting a six. If I do that, then if I come back over here and I balance my K's, I have 12 Ks, oh, that'd be four, right? Four times three is 12. And let's see, now I have six O's, so maybe I could put the three there, and I have four P's, so I'd put four P's like that. I think that's balanced. Okay, let's keep going. All right, let's try this one. So you've got the idea. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to write down in Edpuzzle the reactants and the products. And remember, check charges if it's a compound, Check for diatomic elements if it's alone. And consider which, which partner will chlorine get together with. We'll get together with aluminum or oxygen. But type in the whole reaction. 
All right, did you decide that chlorine was, uh, if it was negative one right there, which partner is it going to get together with, aluminum or oxygen? Definitely aluminum, because aluminum's plus three, oxygen's minus two. So now that we know aluminum's going to get together with chlorine, should I write CLAL or ALCL and why? Definitely this way, because aluminum is positive three, and chlorine is minus one. We've got to get the positive and negative together and we've got to have the negative on the left. Which element ends up by itself? Oxygen. All right, let's check the element by itself. Is it a Brinkelhoff element? Yes, it is. And hey, by the way, a lot of people want to put a two down here because they say chlorine's a Brinkelhoff element, which it is. But why should we not put that two there even though chlorine's a Brinkelhoff element? All right, that's exactly right. So let's see, if I do plus three and minus one, we gotta check charges. Uh, the final formula will be AlCl3. And then of course, you know, we should erase our charges and bounce the whole thing. We might skip it on this one, but you certainly, if you feel like you need a lot of practice balancing, then go ahead and do that. All right, let's keep going here. All right, this one, I want you to uh, write the entire reaction, write the reactants and products, and remember, check charges for any compounds, check for diatomic elements. All right, so what did you decide? If calcium has a two plus charge, because it's right here, and sodium has a plus one charge, because it's right there, and sulfate, we gotta look up on our polyatomic ion chart, it's negative two. Calcium is gonna get that together with sodium or, or sulfate? Sulfate, and calcium's gonna go first, because it's positive two charge, and this is two minus charge. And which element ends up on its own? Sodium, that's right. Now, we've got to see if this is a diatomic element. Is it a diatomic element? No, it's not a Brinkelhoff element, so I don't put a two on it. This one, we got to check charge. So do I need more calciums or sulfates? Neither one, it's already plus two and minus two. We are done. So every single time we see a compound, we will check charges. And every single time we see an element by itself, we will check for diatomics. Now, you notice I don't do it to these ones in the beginning, and sometimes that bothers people, right? We really should, but I'm assuming the author of the problem has already checked charges. We would never give you uh, starting compounds that weren't correct, <laughs> unless it was an accident. And of course, we make mistakes. All right, let's do this one. Um, all right, I want you to decide uh, who phosphorus is going to get together with. Is it ammonium or sulfide? It is definitely ammonium, because phosphorus is right here, and when it forms compounds, it'll be minus three. Ammonium, you gotta look up on your polyatomic ion chart. This whole thing is ammonium, and it's positive one. Sulfur is minus two. Definitely phosphorus is gonna get together with ammonium. But the question is, does the phosphorus go first, or does the ammonium go first? Definitely the ammonium, because ammonium is positive. And which element ends up on its own? Sulfur. And let's see, oh, this is by itself. Is it a diatomic element? No, it's not a Brinkelhoff element, so we don't have to do anything. This one, we got check charges. That's plus one, that's minus three. Uh, do we need more ammoniums or phosphides? Ammoniums, we're gonna need three ammoniums. All right, so you get the idea here. Actually, I'm not, well, I wasn't going to take the time to erase the charges, but let me do it real quick. Um, and of course, as always, if you feel like you need a lot of practicing uh, of equations uh, practice, you should stop the video here and do that. All right, I think this might be our last one. Either that or it's our second or last one. So this one, you guys are becoming pros. I want you to write the, down the reactants in Edpuzzle and the products with charges checked and diatomics if there are diatomics. All right, this is what I got. Uh, we'll do the that last part in just a second, right? Strontium ends up on its own. Strontium is not a Brinkelhoff element. It's an element, but it's not a Brinkelhoff element, so I don't have to put a two. This is plus three. That's minus one, so I'm going to need three hydroxides. And we're done after we erase charges and, of course, balance. All right, so that's we've come a long way here. We've learned about four of the five types of reactions. We know about single displacement now today. We know about double displacement. This is like when two couples come to the dance and swap. We know about synthesis. We know about decomposition. The only thing we have to love to do is combustion. And you'll see there's a reason why we left it to the end. It's because it's the easiest of all of them. But I'm quite sure we're gonna have a practice assignment on these displacement reactions before we get to those because you'll see that this is where the real work comes. Combustion, the end is just fun and easy.